Hey tubers, um, I just got to Portland. Um, I recently drove here across the United States, so um, I'm a little limited on the technology that I've got, so I'm just using a regular webcam. But here's what I've got to show you. When I was driving through California, something interesting happened. Um, I was on Facebook and I was looking through some stuff, and um, you know, it's about the times that we're living in. Uh, it's very obviously the end times. There's a lot going on. There's so much going on in uh, current events that anyone who considers himself a watchman, I find it difficult to keep up with everything because there's so much going on in a single day that matches what was written in the Bible, you know, thousands of years ago. So, one of the things that I think is the most amazing is that Israel was sent into exile in 70 AD and they were exiled across the world for something like 1800 plus years and there's multiple prophecies um, you know Ezekiel 37 about the Valley of Dry Bones uh, there's a lot of others where it talks about the captives of Israel would be brought back into the land um, so that is definitely fulfilling the prophecies of the Bible. There's one that says, shall a nation, shall a nation be born in a day? Um, you know, and that's talking about how Israel was, you know, born as a nation in a single day in 1948. Um, but what I'm looking at here is, you know, the Bible says, they'll say peace and safety and then sudden destruction. So, there's a plot to divide the nation of Israel. Um, so that's what I'm looking at right here. The Palestinians to submit demand for statehood at UN today with Jerusalem as capital. Now, you know, this is the Now the End Begins blog. Um, they put out a lot of interesting articles. Um, now this is nothing new. This has been going on for as long as I've been a watchman. You know, uh, I started watching in 2008. And even back then, George Bush was was talking about, you know, creating peace in Israel, peace and security with Israel. But they want to do it by dividing the land. Um, so, in this article, it's talking about they want to submit a final draft for statehood resolution to the United Nations. Um, and this goes back to something I was looking at here. In Zechariah, sorry, I'm, I'm going to shrink this a little bit to fit the, uh, fit the, there we go. You know, it says, uh, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, says the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in siege both against Judah and Jerusalem. Um, and in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut to pieces, though all the people of the earth shall be gathered against it. You know, and that's what the UN represents. The UN represents the whole world gathered against Jerusalem. So, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas is at the United Nations where he will present his demand for Palestinian statehood. Um, funny thing though, Jerusalem is already the capital of Israel. Jerusalem has always been the capital of Israel. Um, the Palestinians have received global support for this move. Um, you know, they, they got observer status in one of the UN councils. Um, you know, and this is all about them claiming the land. Um, if you look here in, I think it's Joel 3. Yeah, um, in Joel, where did it go? This is Blue Letter Bible. Um, Joel 3 4. Yea, and what do you have to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Um, 
when you go here to the Strong's and you look at Palestine, the word Palestine is an interesting word because it says the land of sojourners. You know, a sojourner is a temporary resident. You know, the land of wanderers, strangers. You know, so they're strangers in the land. They're wanderers. They're, um, you know, sojourners, which means... Um, sorry my camera's moving and all that stuff. Um, like I said, I'm limited on technology. But I'm going to show you what sojourners means here. Sojourn, sojourners. To stay for a time in a place, live temporarily, you know. Um, so the word Palestine, the Palestinians, Philistines, Philistina, all that stuff, it means sojourners, temporary residents, people that do not belong there, they're only passing through. So they're trying to create a Palestinian state, which by very definition means that they don't belong there. They're trespassers. They're people that are temporary residents. Um, you know, so there's a big push for this. And, you know, I just showed you Zechariah. Um, sorry. Zechariah 12, you know, which makes it clear. Oh, I was already on it. Brilliant. I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. Um, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut to pieces. Uh, Zechariah 12.9 It shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. So, you know, nothing new. There's this push for this to happen. But in, um, in Matthew 24, Jesus said that this generation shall not pass until all things be fulfilled. You know, what generation is that talking about? If you're talking about the generation that saw the birth of Israel, you know, they were born in 48. Um, you know, 2014 minus... 1948. That's 66 years. If you add a seven year tribulation, that's easily within the 70, 80 years that are defined in, you know, Psalm 90, um, Psalm 90, verse 10. But I'm just kind of winging it. I hope you don't mind because, yeah. But here's something that I found really interesting. I was going down the highway in uh, California. I was looking at my phone. Yes, I was committing a crime. I was uh, using my phone while driving a vehicle. And I found um, this page, the Palestinian Liberation Organization and Hamas. And I posted this to my Facebook because look at how many likes it's got on it. Oh, I went to the Grand Canyon too. Uh, how do I get back? I broke it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, 666 likes when I posted this. So, I said, you know, while I was snooping around Facebook, I found this with an interesting number of likes, 666. When I posted this to my Facebook, um, something crazy happened. So right after I posted that to um, Facebook, I look up and I'm running behind this truck. And it was this truck here. I know the pictures are junk, but um, this truck, if you'll notice this um, triangle up here, I know you can't tell what it says, but I'm going to go to a more clear picture to show you what that is. Okay, so. Hmm. Sorry, I told you the technology I'm limited, so I'm kind of winging it. Um, this is what it is. A cord, okay? It's a cord, and here's the logo.
I know that's not super okay yeah so it's like an Illuminati pyramid thing with the eyeball on it and a cord you know and um, this is right after I posted that Palestinian Liberation Organization page to my Facebook with 666 likes and it's got the Illuminati eyeball on it with a cord and what is the accord look up um, the Camp David Accords look up the Oslo Accords it's all these agreements about um, dividing Israel to create the Palestinian state you know and scripture makes it clear that if you divide Israel you will be divided um, I believe that that is the actual covenant that starts the 70th week of Daniel's you know prophecy the final week of prophecy now I just recently saw a video by Mark Biltz. Um, Mark Biltz was the guy that discovered the um, Blood Moon Tetrad. And he said that, you know, based on God's, you know, patterns and, you know, moeds and all this stuff, you'll have to, you'll have to watch the thing. But um, the seven year tribulation can only happen in a Shemitah cycle. It can only happen in the Shemitah cycle that Jonathan Kahn talks about. Um, and I recently studied, or I recently listened to uh, Jonathan Kahn's Mystery of the Shemitah teaching. And I'm telling you, it's dead on accurate that the time that we're living in, um, we're coming up into September, which is the fall feasts. Um, and I'm not declaring that it's going to be rapture or World War III, but we have three witnesses. We have the Shemitah cycle begins. Um, we have the Jubilee year begins, which is like every 50th year, and then we have the three blood moon, the three blood moons. So those two cycles are changing right before the final moon. Um, you know, it's like I can't teach all that stuff in just one video, but I really believe that we're about to see this thing happen. And if you look at the if you look at the way the world's going. Um, you know, you're supposed to know the time of your visitation. You're supposed to know the time of, um, you know, the signs and the seasons. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, you can know the date of the rapture, that you can know the day of World War III. But there's so much stuff that points to this where the Bible says, watch so that you're not overtaken as a thief. Well, if you're not watching this and aware of this, like most of the world is completely oblivious to what's going on most of the church is completely oblivious oh my gosh oblivious to what's going on but if you're watching and you're actually studying things that matter instead of you know spending all your time watching football or you know goofing around doing whatever you're doing playing xbox i don't know but um you know study things that matter and know the time of your visitation so I just I wanted to share that stuff because it was interesting to me God really talks to me through the environment that's around me and you know I found that Palestinian Liberation Organization page 666 likes and I look up right when I posted that I look up and I'm looking at a truck that says this on it you know Accord like the Illuminati Accord, it's the it's all about the the peace accord and the whole reason for the pyramid and the the one eye thing. Um, the devil is trying to copycat God. It's like God is already all knowing, you know, omnipresent, omniscient. You know, it means he knows all things, he sees all things, um, he has all power. And the devil tries to mimic that. So how does he do that? He sets up surveillance where there's cameras everywhere. You know, they monitor everything that you do through these dumb phones. It's like this phone has cameras and GPSs and all this other stuff. And they're tracking people even when you don't think you're being tracked. You're being tracked. They got OnStar in the cars. Um, you know, it's like everybody on the Internet. It's like anonymity is just gone on the internet because they want to know everything that you're doing they want to know everything that you're researching and it's like Facebook is a voluntary um, data 
collection thing where they know everything about you. I posted a picture on Facebook one time and had never posted a picture with that person before and instantly I load the picture up and it says is this person like do you want to tag this person and it had this it had the name of that person you know so it's all facial recognition they have the facial recognition software so that they instantly recognize the person that I was with in the picture even though I'd never had a picture with that person previously and it was within like less than a second so that's what the devil does he mimics God by he wants to know everything he wants to see everything that's why we have this surveillance society that's why we have you know they know everything you're doing on the internet because the devil wants to have the same capability um, so this stuff is about to happen and what do you do with your life if you only have nine le nine months left um, I'm not saying that you do but let's be wise about this if you take the time to study what the Bible says about this time um, there's more than enough information on the internet look at the uh, look at the San Andreas movie that's coming out I think it's coming out in May uh, they're forecasting what is coming and America specifically has major stuff coming against it there's major judgments coming against um, this nation not just because of how we've kicked God out of everything we've kicked prayer out of schools Bible out of schools kicked them out of the courts kicked the Ten Commandments out of the courts um, and basically Obama the leader of this nation has said we are no longer a Christian nation so he being the he being the top of the pyramid he has the power to confess that and just because the majority doesn't believe that he's the leader so it's like the majority put that leader in position so as a majority we're accountable for what that man represents and when he says we're no longer a Christian nation you know God views that as okay the majority put that man in power so the majority no longer believes that we're a Christian nation you know they may not say it outright but when you put that when you put that man in power that's what you get so like it or not um, people debate this stuff I don't care you know if you don't agree with me then good luck to you because the world is about to drastically change and if you think that Obama is some kind of saint and that he's not the Antichrist uh, give me a break like I put this uh, I recorded this video talking about um, I wanted to address the things that happened between the first blood moon that happened in like April and the second one that happened in like September because there's fulfillment or foreshadowing of the four seals of revelation um, just in between the first two blood moons you know and we have two more coming up um, so when I recorded this video it turned out to be exactly 13 seconds and a uh, 13 seconds and a piece of a second you know and I was like wow I think it was I think it was 13.1 and you know what is 13.1 Revelation 13 point one and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his ten horns uh, ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy so I'll just I'll finish this up because this video is going long but this video happened between the first moon and the second moon um, don't forget it was also when we were getting exposed to ISIS beheading people, that's the fifth seal. Uh, Israel had, um, you know, war encounters with um, Gaza, you know, so there's, uh, I, I don't have the information in front of me, but research it out. It's like God is showing you what's coming between the first blood moon and the second blood moon. You know, Obama is exposed as the Antichrist once again. 
Um, the beheadings have been seen, you know, on a global scale. Everybody saw that. Everybody saw a guy losing his head. And the Bible is clear that Christians in the end times will lose their heads. So, sorry if this is long, but um, you have to know Jesus Christ and you have to trust in His righteousness and His goodness because nothing that you do is good enough to be saved. You know, the just shall live by faith. You are justified by faith and not the law. Um, you can't keep the commandments. You can't be righteous in your own righteousness. It's like Jesus did the work so that you can take on His righteousness. So trust in Jesus. Confess Him as Lord and Savior. Follow Him. Be a disciple. Be a follower of Jesus. Not just a, Don't just believe in your head, but follow Him. You know, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? That's Scripture. So, trust in Jesus. Confess that you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Ask for forgiveness and get under the blood of Jesus Christ before it's too late. Um, and then, don't stop there. Have a relationship with the Lord and follow Him. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't even make these videos if I wasn't obedient to the Holy Spirit. So... Sorry I'm running long, and sorry it was just a kind of jumbled mess, but that's what I can do right now. Take it or leave it. But God bless, know Jesus, and um, prepare, you know. I'm not saying, you know, M16s and MREs, but prepare your heart to meet the Lord. That's what I got. Later. Okay, this article from, from Business Insider was posted on May 3rd, so it was after the first blood moon of 2014 and before the second. Um, now, there's a scripture, a prophecy about the Antichrist that I've never seen anyone fulfill in a reasonable way. I've never seen it explained in a way that was understandable. Now, the prophecy is Revelation 6, verse 2, And I saw, and behold, a white horse... And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So in this picture, which was put out by the White House, so they know what they're doing, he has a crown in his lap, and there's a bow on the table, a crossbow on the table. Um, you know, and again, I've never seen anyone fulfill this prophecy in any way possible that I've ever seen from anyone. I've never heard an explanation of this prophecy in a way that applies like this does. So, Obama is leading the way on dividing Israel. Um, you know, that's one of the roles of the Antichrist, to bring division, to, to rule over Jerusalem, and all that kind of stuff. So, that's one of his goals. Um, and I believe, I don't know exactly when this covenant will be made, but I would say that close to the time of September is logical. Um, could it happen some other way? Yeah, I guess. Um, but, you know, this guy is fulfilling in so many ways. The acceptance speech that he gave for the presidency was in Denver Stadium. There's a white horse behind him. He was standing on a replica of the seat of Satan, the altar of Zeus, the Pergamum altar, you know, all that stuff's in Revelation. And, um, you know, he's gone forth conquering and to conquer. He's conquered Libya. He's conquered Egypt. He's conquered Ethiopia. Um, he's conquered, uh, you know, multiple leaders in the Middle East. And, um, you know, now he's in the midst of conquering America. Before this guy showed up, America was prosperous. But... You know, just like Daniel says, he seeks to change times and laws. You know, by craft he will po prosper. He will deceive many with peace. So, if you're not if you're not up on this stuff, if you haven't done your research on him and you think it's somebody else, well, good for you. You know, the the one of the things about the Antichrist is that he deceives so many. So, if you don't think it's him, um, you're either uninformed or you're deceived. So, you know, 
get your stuff right. You know, follow Jesus and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal these things to you because Jesus reveals the truth to his friends. He says that, you know, I will reveal all truth. So seek the Holy Spirit. You know, um, that's what I got when I when I originally made this video. It was 13 seconds point one, 13 point one. So go read Revelation 13.1. It's about the beast rising out of the sea. God bless.